very good evening and welcome to the national broadcast. I am Malsha Dharmavadana. And I am Tilina Udayaratna. For starters, we take a look at tonight's top stories. Gabba Pentin, produced by the State Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Corporation, has been released to the market. The president says that a sports environment paving the way for a disciplined and energetic society must be created. The Attorney General instructs to obtain compensation amounting to 340 million rupees from the owners of the ship ravaged by fire. The Prime Minister says commercial banks have a greater responsibility to safeguard local industrialists. A relief period to be granted tomorrow to get used to the road lane law. The law will become effective from next Monday. Well, on your top local story this evening, Sri Lanka raises concern over the statement made by the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights on the proposed 20th Amendment, citing that the comments are unwarranted and prejudgmental based on presumption. In a statement delivered in response by Sri Lanka's acting permanent representative to the United Nations in Geneva, Vayani Mendis said that the 20th Amendment to the Constitution submitted through the Parliament will follow a completely democratic democratic process, allowing the stakeholders to present their views in this regard. Sri Lanka delivered the statement during the general debate on Agenda Item 2 at the 45th session of the UN Human Rights Council today. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights raised concerns on the proposed 20th Amendment to the Constitution on Monday, citing that the proposed amendment may negatively impact on the independence of key institutions, including the National Human Rights Commission. Mr. Vice President, Sri Lanka wishes to respond to the references made by the High Commissioner. This Council would appreciate that Sri Lanka, while successfully containing COVID-19, held its commitment to democratic processes and conducted parliamentary elections last month, which the EU has acknowledged. Sri Lanka made it clear, even as it withdrew from co-sponsorship of Resolution 30-1, that it will remain committed to achieving reconciliation, accountability and human rights within the framework of the Constitution through a domestically designed and executed process in line with the government's policy framework. Government which assumed office with the election of the new parliament on 5th August remains committed to the assurances given before this Council in February this year. The draft 20th Amendment to the Constitution will be discussed and debated following a complete democratic process where all stakeholders will have the opportunity to present their views. Therefore, Sri Lanka is of the view that the High Commissioner's comments on the proposed 20th Amendment are unwarranted and prejudgmental based on presumption. The pardon to the former Army Sergeant was granted in terms of the powers and provisions of the Constitution of Sri Lanka. The government rejects the false and unsubstantiated allegations against senior military officials being appointed to key positions of institutions when domestic processors have not found substantive evidence against them. The government has already publicly refuted allegations of surveillance and intimidation and is committed to protecting freedom of expression and civil society space and ensuring that complaints received on alleged attacks against journalists, human rights defenders and civil society are investigated and prosecuted. The Attorney General have forwarded a letter to demand to the attorney of the owners of the vessel, New Diamond, requesting compensation to offset the expenditure incurred in dowsing of fire of the ship. The letter was sent to receive compensation amounting to 340 million rupees. This was disclosed by the coordinating officer of the AG, Attorney at Law, Nishara Jairatna. Coordinating Officer of the AG, Attorney at Law, Nishara Jairatna, said that expenditure estimated restricts only to the expenses incurred until yesterday. The MIPA Institute is scheduled to release a report in next few days after making an assessment on the damages sustained by the marine environment as a result of the oil leak. The Attorney General have instructed the Director of the CID to name a captain of the crude oil ship as a suspect of the incident. 
The government has decided to complete construction of 100,000 kilometers of rural roads by 2024. The president has entrusted this responsibility of joining the rural road network with the main road system to the relevant officials. This decision has been taken at a discussion held yesterday at the president's office regarding future plans of the State Ministry of Rural Roads and other infrastructure facilities. The president has stated that it is the right of every citizen to fulfill his or her transport requirements with comfort, safety and without delay. The Saubagi Dakma policy statement has guaranteed the provision of a road network with the highest level of standards, overcoming the setback in the transportation system and the broken interrelations. The president has reiterated that the construction of 100,000 kilometers of rural and by roads throughout the island should be carried out with without causing damages to the environment. New bridges have to be constructed in place of small bridges, wire bridges and passways made out of planks. Work has commenced on the construction of 800,000 kilometers of roads in the past few months. Out of this number, 400 kilometers have been fully constructed. The responsibility of procurement of earth, metal and sand for road construction lies with all district secretaries. The president also said that all institutions should meet on the district level to give prior permission for the types of environment for which approval has to be granted to supply relevant resources. It has also been decided at the meeting to plant two million saplings along main roads. No room should be left to have any obstructions or delays in the construction process. Supervision of road construction is the responsibility of both the government and contractors. The need to extend subcontracts should be eliminated at all times. President Gotabe Rajapaksa has also instructed the relevant officials to take measures to fully prohibit parking of vehicles on pavements along main roads. It has also been instructed to make it compulsory to provide vehicle parking facilities in the construction of apartment housing complexes, trade centers and other major buildings. The president said that preparations should have to be carried out as much as possible for the implementation of development projects. This enables investors to find out from where they should have to carry out work. According to the present system, individuals themselves will have to go to the projects to receive approval. The president has pointed out that the possibility on the utilization of solar panels in this connection is in fact imminent. There is the possibility of utilization of wind projects as well. He has also stated on the possibilities of engaging in prone farming as well. Construction of tourist hotels is another possibility. Specific studies will have to be carried out with regards to each project. The president has also pointed out the need to appoint a committee by the relevant institutions for the purpose of immediately marking the locations for the desired projects. Investors should not wait until they receive projects. The prior requests from the Environmental Authority and the Department of Wildlife Conservation as well as the Mahavali Authority would enable those engaged in projects to construct roads to receive the relevant raw material without difficulty. Minister Johnston Fernando, State Minister Nimal Lansa, Head of the Presidential Task Force on Economic Resurgence, Basil Rajapaksa and President Secretary P.B. Jayasundara have also participated in this discussion. A drug named gabapentine produced by the State Pharmaceutical Cooperation have been introduced to the market today. The newly produced drug is an anti-epileptic drug used in patients who suffer from neurological diseases and to prevent and control seizure. From newly rather from neurological diseases and to prevent and control seizure. This was the first medicine which was manufactured under the new program Alutratak Alutbehet. The manufacturing of the gabapentin 300 mg capsule is a great victory which is achieved by only government sector western drug manufacturer. The annual requirement of gabapentin 300 mg capsule is around 15 million. The government has spent a massive amount of funds to import the drug thus far. The new production can also save the money which is utilized for importing the drug and will also be able to supply people with fresh drug which is a higher in quantity. Official 
leaders, including the state minister Chalna Jasumana, was also present at the occasion. 20% of Sri Lanka's drug requirement is currently manufactured locally. Development of pharmaceutical manufacturing is a part of policy proposals included in President Gotabe Rajapaksha's manifesto, The Stars of Prosperity and Splendor. And the SPC aims to produce around 50 to 60% of the country's pharmaceutical requirement locally. President Gotabe Rajapaksa reiterates that it is the responsibility of the current era to create a sports environment that leads to the formation of a healthy, disciplined and energetic society. He further points out that a child could be turned into a comprehensive citizen by diverting him or her to sports in parallel to education. The President has expressed these remarks at a discussion on future plans of the State Ministry of Rural and School Sports Infrastructure Facility Promotion at the President's office today. Sports is the language of youth. The President has pointed out on the need to implement a program that selects talented students in their early ages and to provide them proper nutrition and training for local and international competitions. The President further said that there have been requests for new playgrounds from rural schools, but it has been observed in many instances that such playgrounds were not maintained properly. Therefore, the President has ordered officials to take measures to set up a separate unit for the maintenance of school playgrounds in all districts. The local government institutions are able to maintain such playgrounds. Head of the Presidential Task Force on Economic Revival, Basil Rajapaksa has requested officials to clean and beautify all playgrounds in the island within three months. Minister of Youth and Sports Namal Rajapaksa said at the discussion that plans have been made to commence a sports university of international standard by amalgamating the National Sports Academy in Colombo with the sports complex in Viagama. The minister further said that it is necessary to go to the places where children play in order to build a systematic sports environment. Minister Namal Rajapaksa further said that his ministry has focused attention in the past few months over the maintenance of major sports grounds under one institute and also on the establishment of 25 fully-fledged sports schools as well as on inclusion of new proposals on the Sports Act and the drafting of a new act for the well-being of sports with the contributions of the private private sector. The president said that the popular sports in each school which have the highest attraction on rural level should be identified and be able for sportsmen to be able to be trained expeditiously. Member of Sports Council Kumar Sangakara has pointed out that the importance of training a group to compete in international graded tournaments. He also said that provision of marks for sports abilities when admitting students to universities would enable to create sportsmen and women of the national level. Attention has also been focused on complete restructuring of the Sugatadasa Sports Authority. The meeting has also stressed on the opportunities available to identify sports in which Olympic medals could be won. It has also point, been pointed out that competitors should be trained on sports such as archery and target shooting. The president said that they have observed in the previous two election campaigns that there was a great demand for school and provincial playgrounds. He added that, however, when they built such grounds, they were not maintained properly. The president added that, therefore, a unit is needed to take charge of such playgrounds. He also said that many playgrounds were constructed with the assistance of the army. The president further said that he has instructed to set up a regiment in every district for the construction unit and a separate unit for the maintenance of such playgrounds. Deputy Speaker Ranjit Siambalapitiya, Minister Professor G. L. Piris and State Minister Tenuka Vidanagamage have also attended the discussion. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha says that the commercial banks have a great role to play in the task of safeguarding local industrialists. He has made these remarks attending the inauguration ceremony of the Shilpa Thursday exhibition, which has commenced at the Bhattaramulla Theatre Uyana premises today. The exhibition to be conducted today and tomorrow remains open from 8.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. 
Thereafter, the Shriyuk Thursday exhibition will be conducted on every Thursday of the week. The objective of this event is to provide market opportunities to local industrialists. The program is being implemented by the National Art Council, which is affiliated to the State Ministry of Cane, Brassware, Clay, Furniture and Rural Industrial Promotion. The Prime Minister had further stated on this occasion that the present government has focused major attention to safeguard local industrialists. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha said that at every occasion the government came into power, prominence was given to the local traditions. He added that in order to propagate new local industries, they should promote marketing and utilization potentials. The Prime Minister has also pointed out that the biggest problem confronted by rural artists today is the difficulties in obtaining bank loans. Financial capital is necessary to develop and carrying forward industries. The Prime Minister added that therefore he believes that the bank should adopt a new liberalized policy with regard to local industries. Former head of national intelligence Sisira Mendes says that he does not accept by any means the charges that it was due to his negligence to properly carry out duties that made it impossible to prevent the occurrence of the Easter Sunday terror attack. He made these observations giving evidence before the Presidential Investigation Commission on the Easter Sunday attack last evening. Former National Intelligence Chief Sisira Mendes appeared before the Presidential Investigation Commission for the sixth occasion. He added that the reason for the inability to prevent the attack was the failure to arrest Zaharan Hashim by the police headed by the IGP, the Terrorist Investigation Unit and the Criminal Investigation Department. He was initially interrogated by the State Additional Solicitor General whether he had forwarded the letter received by him from the then Director of State Intelligence Service, Nilanta Jawardana, regarding a pre war warning by a foreign intelligence division regarding the Easter Sunday attack. Sisira Mendes has re responded saying that he had directed the letter to IGP Pujit Jayasundara through an official as he had realized that it was important to inform the IGP in this connection as the foreign intelligence report had indicated that the office of the Indian High Commissioner as well as important churches could become the targets of an extremist group headed by Zaharan Hashim. The State Additional Solicitor General has again inquired whether the witness and the former Director of the State Intelligence Service, Nilanda Javardana, has given him a telephone call on the 19th of April prior to the attack. Mendes has replied saying that Nilanta Jayavardhan had telephoned him on the 19th of April saying that a blast had occurred in Kartankudi. Mendes answering another question by the additional solicitor general whether Nilanta Jayavardhan through his telephone call had informed that Zahar Hashim was connected to the explosion said that he did not mention anything in this connection. The additional solicitor general had inquired whether the wife of the witness who is a devoted Catholic attended church service on Saturday the 20th of April last year. Mendes has said that his wife had attended service in church in their area of residence in the evening on the 20th of April as she was not aware of the relevant intelligence information. Mendes has further pointed out that another reason for her attendance was due to the fact of her thinking that the Gen IGP would have taken adequate security measures as he was informed of the intelligence report. Cicero Mendes further said that at the moment of leaving to the church on the day before the Easter attack, Director of State Intelligence Nilanta Javardana had telephoned him once again saying that a problem had risen and he had informed the IGP. On this instance, the telephone line was disconnected. Mendes also said that he had not made any effort to reconnect Javardana. At this instance, the additional state solicitor general has cross-examined him once again, inquiring whether his conscience did not blame him for neglecting his duties when eight locations in the island were subject to terror attacks, even at a time he was fully informed. Mendes replied, saying that he did not feel that way. He added that the situation had been created due to the failure of the responsible parties to arrest Zaharan. Upon conclusion of cross-examination by the additional Solicitor General, opportunities have been provided for other parties who have received summons to interrogate the witness. However, at this instance, the relevant parties were not present at the Commission. The President of the Commission has expressed his displeasure over the absence of these groups. Junior lawyers appearing on behalf of former Director of State Intelligence Nilanta Jayavardhana, former Director of Army Intelligence Chula Kodituaku, and former Senior DIG in charge of the CID Ravi 
Siniviratna have informed the commission that they did not have senior attorneys to cross-examine the witness. Attorneys at law appearing on behalf of former President Maitri Pala Sirisena and former Defence Secretary Hemasiri Fernando were also not present at the hall on this instant. President of the Commission said that the final date for these attorneys to cross-examine Mendis will be tomorrow. The attorney of former IGP Pujit Jayasundra said that he had no questions to ask from Sisira Mendis. Meanwhile, parliamentarian Rishad Badiuddin and Naufar Maulavi, regarded as the theoreticians of the National Tauhid Jamaat organization, were also summoned before the police unit of the Presidential Investigation Commission today. The Presidential Commission has informed its secretary today to forward further for further investigation to the CID, the mobile phone and laptop computer used by former director of the State Intelligence Division at the time of the Easter Sunday attack. These items were handed over to the police unit on the orders of the commission recently. Senior DIG in charge of the CID has ordered the commission to focus attention on how messages were exchanged from the 1st of January to the 31st of December 2019. Accordingly, the Presidential Commission has ordered the CID today to submit a report within two weeks if there is any evidence recorded in voice tapes that bears any connection to the Easter Sunday attacks. Hemasiri Fernando, who was functioning as Secretary of Defense at the time of the attack, has given evidence before the Presidential Commission for the first time today. Former minister of the previous government, Harin Fernando, who had created controversy with the occurrence of the Sunday attack, was also summoned before the commission today. Presidential Secretariat informs all school principals to reject any request made to enroll students into school while mentioning the names of the president, prime minister or high-ranking officials of the state sector, the secretary to the president have informed that stern steps will be taken against the principals who violate this directive. Certain groups have involved in persuading school principals to enroll students into schools using letters mentioning that a directive has been issued in the regard by the president, officials of the presidential secretariat, prime minister, Prime Ministerial Secretariat or other higher-ranking officials of the state. Further observations have revealed that state officials have directed such letters to school principals in several occasions. Admission of students into schools by respective principals should not be based on any such letters of recommendation. The enrollment of students should be conducted adhering to approved regulations and necessary procedures. Accordingly, the Presidential Secretariat have informed all school principals to carry out relevant procedures while directing a special attention to relevant instructions. A special meritorious ceremony in connection with the 156th commemoration of Anagarika Dharmapala was held at the Mahabodhi Agrashravaka Mahavihara in Colombo today, preceded over by Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. The Prime Minister garlanded a statue of Anagarika Dharmapala after religious observances. Thereafter, an almsgiving of the Mahasangha was conducted. Chief Sanganayaka of Japan, Venerable Banagala Upati Safera, presented a souvenir to the Prime Minister. Secretary to the Ministry of Buddhasasana, Religious and Cultural Affairs, Professor Kapila Gunavardhana has presented the 156th birth anniversary special issue of Anagarika Dharmapala to the Prime Minister. The Premier has handed over presents to those who are offering services to the sacred relics in appreciation of their duties. The Mahasangha, headed by Acting Registrar of the Malvatu Mahavihara Chapter, Venerable Pahamune Sumanglatera, Mahanayaka of the Amarapura Shri Dharmarakita Mahanikaya, Most Venerable Tirikunamale Anandatera, Anunayaka of the Sri Lanka Ramanya Nikaya, Venerable Matale Dhammakusalatera, have also attended the event. A group of clergymen of the Methodist Council and state officials has met Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa at Temple Trees today. Their objective was to discuss on the problems related to development programs in the Eastern province. Attention has been focused on problems relating to schools, residences, hospitals, transportation and education in the areas of Tirikkovil, Kalmune and Ampara. The meeting has also discussed on the development of the Ampara town and the establishment of an industrial zone as well as the recommencement of suspended bus services. The attention has also been drawn on the construction of churches with regularization and filling of Christian teacher cadres and problems relating to the admission of children to Christian schools. 
Reverend Father G.S. Chamira Silva and Prime Minister's Secretary Gamini Senrat have also participated in the discussion. Now, three armed suspects have been arrested following a raid carried out in Dikwella. And the raid was carried out yesterday by the officials of the Special Task Force Camp in Horana. Two foreign revolvers, a locally manufactured weapon and five live bullets were recovered from the suspects. The suspects are residents of Dikwella, Nakulugamua and Valaskala areas. An associate of the drug smuggler Vele Suda has been taken into custody in Madulava, Homagama by the Migura police. Six grams of heroin were seized by the 30-year-old suspect who is a resident of Madulava, Mutukatapura. A suspect identified as Sumira Madushanka, who is a member of an organized criminal gang, has been arrested in Kotahena today in possession of heroin. The senior DIG's office says that 429 suspects related to allegations including drugs were being arrested in the western province in the last 24 hours that ended at 6 in the morning today. A vehicle with 1.5 kilograms of cannabis was taken into custody by the police. The raid was carried out following a tip-off received by the Mitiagoda Ambalangoda police. During the police chase, the suspect had fled the scene after deserting the vehicle. The suspect had accidentally dropped the parcel of cannabis while he was tired to flee. A suspect in possession of 75 grams of heroin has been taken into custody in Kalanimulla, Angoda, following a tip-off received to the anti-corruption unit of the Nugegoda Police Division. The suspect is a resident of Sivali Lane in Borella. Legal action will be taken against the lane law offenders from next Monday onwards. The police says that offenders will be fined 2,000 rupees or either has to pay a fine imposed by the court. The lane law is more effective in Colombo City as a solution to reduce the existing traffic congestion. Four main roads which are used to enter the Colombo City have been chosen in the regard. Measures have been taken to obtain the support of the Army and the Air Force for the task. DIG Lal Senaviratna says that the difficulties which arose in the first two days have been evaded and also said that they expected to get rid of difficulties completely in the next two days. He further said that slight difficulties are arise when implementing a new project. Now, Minister Kehelia Ramukwell emphasizes that the education system should be updated to suit the new world of today. He made these remarks while taking part in a ceremony that was held in Kandy. The graduation ceremony of the First Friends Campus in Kandy was held at the Earls Regency Auditorium recently. Minister Kehelia Ramukwella took part in the ceremony as chief guest. The minister commended the students who fulfilled their aspirations amidst the COVID-19 challenge. The minister pointed out that many new trends have been created in the country's employment market through the private education sector. A five-member committee has been appointed to investigate activities of Sri Lanka Medical Council. It was appointed by Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi. The Sri Lanka Medical Council is an institution established through a charter. It was decided to appoint a special committee comprised of veterans in the field by taking into consideration of the complaints received from numerous sectors regarding the functioning of the council. The committee is comprised of specialist physician Professor Hemantha Pereira, former dean of Ragama Medical Faculty Professor Prashant Vijay Singh, specialist 
physician Dr. Anulavi J. Sundara, specialist physician Dr. Maitri Chandraratna, and specialist physician Dr. Darshana Sirisena. The objective is to take appropriate measures to provide a more qualitative health service by taking into consideration of the reports of the Medical Council and a specialist committee. And today on our special feature rate of Red Light, we focus on the Maha Usweva Dharma Shoka Junior School. This is how the students of Maha Usweva, Maha Usweva Dharma Shoka Junior School are engaging in their educational activities during their school time. They were compelled to carry out their educational activities outside due to the dilapidated condition of the existing main building of the school. In a technologically advanced era, while the whole world focuses on online education, the students of this school have been deprived of a shelter to engage in their academic activities. State Minister of Women and Child Development, Preschools and Primary Education, Schools, Infrastructure and Education, we bring this to your attention. The newly constructed concrete production sales center at the Dehayagama office premises of the National Machinery Institute in Anuradhapura was declared open today. The general public is able to purchase components made out of concrete as well as obtain machinery and equipment services at a concessionary price from this centre. State Minister, retired Rear Admiral Sarat Virasekar has inspected wastewater and rainwater disposal facilities in the Colombo district today. The aim is to find a solution to flooding. Minister Mahinda Ananda Aludgamage engaged in observation tour in Jaffna today to look into the problems of the farmers in the northern province. The minister attended the Farm Association meeting at the office of the district secretary. He has given instant solutions to the farmers' problems. Another program to resolve people's problems in the northern province was conducted under the leadership of State Minister Shashinder Rajapaksa at the Cultural Performance Theatre in Vaunia today. Minister Dallas Alaperwa, meanwhile, engaged in a fact-finding tour at the Kalaniti Sapawa Generation Centre yesterday. And on a roundup of sports for tonight, cricket players of the Ranajayapura Ipalogama Sports Club in Kakirava are experiencing severe difficulties in engaging in practices. In the meantime, a group of individuals have destroyed the matting used for cricket practices by setting up it on fire. Due to the unavailability of cricket in schools in Kakirava and Ipalogama areas, cricket is not rising up within these areas, though talented children for cricket exists. Around 40 players are engaged in cricket practices through the Ipalogama Cricket Club. Coaches are currently conducting practice sessions voluntarily. The main coach is Ajit Bandara. Minister of Sports and Youth Affairs, Namal Rajapaksa, has invited the members of the club to meet him after being aware of the incident of destroying the matting of the ground. Following the discussion, Minister Namal Rajapaksa has taken measures to provide a new matting and several kits of cricket equipment through the Sri Lanka Cricket Organization. Minister Namal Rajapaksa has also advised the relevant officials to take necessary measures to establish an open-air physical training centre and to provide infrastructure to sports. Asia's fastest athlete, Yupun Abekon, has achieved the third place from an invited athletics tournament held in Switzerland. He finished the lap with a timing of 10.24 seconds. The first place which you see was achieved by South African athlete Akani Simbin, who placed first at the Commonwealth Games as well, with a timing of 10.02 seconds. Second place was achieved by Italian world champion Filippo Totu, with a timing of 10.07 seconds. Yupun Abekun expressed his pleasure in being able to contest with internationally recognized sportsmen. Well, that's all on the Rupuwaini News Desk for tonight. Join us once again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, thanks for watching. Have a good night. Good night.